as you can appreciate there's a lot more to masking than we've done so far I just want to show you a couple more bits and pieces I'm at the beginning of my event and I'm going to draw a custom shape at the moment so I'm just going to quickly draw a custom shape just to show you some simple things once you've created your shape if you go back to the normal edit tool suddenly you get the option to be able to do other things so um, you can't see what's going on below but believe me the other clip is below that's just one of these quirks of my screen recording software if I click this negative button the mask then rather than revealing this section will hide it and reveal the rest it inverts the mask so when I click negative mask it inverts it so you can have a mask revealing or a mask hiding it's entirely up to you but what happens when you click these buttons here is you can feather the edge of your mask and it's just worth saying at this point a little goes a long way you can feather a mask in you can feather a mask out that means the edge of the mask sort of blurs at the edge either going outwards or inwards or both so if I was to do feather outwards I get a slider and what I'm saying is from this line feather outwards go smoother and softer until you disappear to nothing outwards and the more you pull this the wider it's going to be so if I just go out a little bit here you can see I've got a blur that's kind of gone out from full opacity see the whole thing here to nothing here so it's kind of blurred outwards but if you go too far you can end up with kind of slightly odd looks maybe that's what you want maybe you want, that's great for revealing a sun or whatever but just bear in mind a little goes a long way I'm going to take that back to nothing because I want to move on and show you a couple of other things you know that you can animate masks over time so if I go forward in time to here suddenly you think you've lost it oh my goodness what's happened it's disappeared just notice a different track has been created go back to masks there's that one here and I'm actually on this mask here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this mask pull it out and then you'll see over time the mask is animated okay so it has animated so masks are completely animatable you can change the shape you can even change the blur but there's one other thing to show you if I click back here and I go back to my mask channel down here I can create additional masks as well so if I create we'll do oval and square we'll look at those in detail in a moment but I just click and create an oval around here I'm creating an additional mask now that mask won't appear until it hits this keyframe so if I go before it I've got nothing but when I go to this point here bop it appears and we can see it if I click here on my screen there's the mask so I've got two masks actually one's done the other one just go back a bit you can see the two of them together so you can see it bopped on screen and it appeared till this keyframe when we get to that keyframe you can see it's going slowly because it's having to do a lot of thinking it's not there anymore it's kind of disappeared so you can create additional masks so you can have quite a lot of masks going on at the same time if you don't want any of them anymore what you can do is sort of draw around your keyframes and just hit delete so I've deleted those keyframes I still got the original one what I can do is go back to that original keyframe and if I hit delete on that one nothing's going to happen so what I need to do is select the mask then hit delete and it's gone okay so let's have a very brief talk about these ones here if you want to create a rectangle which is a really easy way of doing things click and drag and a rectangle is created okay no problem not difficult at all control Z to undo that if you want that mask to be a perfect square when you click and drag I'm going to click and drag from the top of this flag for example click and drag it's not a perfect square but as soon as I hold the shift key it becomes a perfect square right so that's if you want a perfect square hold the shift key but if you want it to draw from the center outwards if you remember control Z get rid of that if I draw from the middle of the flag again and I draw out if I hold the control key it draws from the center point so if you want to reveal something perfectly click right in the middle of it hold the control key and you can drag it out to show it now as well as this function again I'm going to control Z to get rid of that as well as that the alt keys both do something now if you look at your keyboard you've got two alt keys usually to the side of your spacebar one on the left and one on the right so if I click and drag and hold the alt key on the left you'll see that I get a rounded rectangle in other words the corners are rounded if I hold the one on the right you'll see that I get a diamond a diamond shape and the diamond shape if you hold the shift key as well can become a perfect sort of square on its side so that's 
working with rectangles. You can change them to your heart's content. I'm just going to delete that. Working with ellipses is very similar. I'm going to go on the flag. If I click and drag and then hold the control key, you'll see it centers on the flag. If I hold the shift key, it'll become a perfect circle. Hold the shift and control key, you'll see that it's a perfect circle based on where I started drawing it. The Alt keys basically flatten off one side, either the top or the bottom of the circle. So if I hold the Alt left, you'll see that it flattens up the bottom. If I was to hold Alt right, it's going to flatten the top. So those are the various modifier keys that you can have. And that shows how you can actually animate bits and pieces. I've clicked there now. It's created right at the beginning of my clip. I can add a blur to it. I can invert it. All the bits and pieces we've done before. And I can move it across the screen. So it's very easy to do. You can do lots of bits and pieces and you can change it after the event. So I can say, actually, you know what? I want it to be totally different from how it originally looked. So you can go in and make any modifications you like once it's been created. You can even rotate it if you require. So you see that masking is really powerful inside of Sony Vegas. And there is still more that we can do because you can use the masks as a basis for an effect. In other words, saying just have an effect showing inside a mask. And we'll have a look at that in the next tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching.